Welcome to the iSearch podcast. Today I have Richard from RW William, the managing partner of RW William as our guest. So RW William is an accounting firm with multiple offices in Malaysia, in uh, Penang, Ipoh, KL, PJ, Klang, Seremban and Johor. Today I'll be discussing with Richard about how SMEs in Malaysia can have better tax management and planning. So welcome to the show, Richard. Yes, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Okay, could you just share a bit about uh, what is tax management and planning and why is it important for businesses? Okay, so generally in Malaysia, uh, a lot of businesses, especially uh, we are focusing more on SME businesses and companies, they're not aware of this tax planning and management, which uh, and they results in a lot of penalties, which later we'll talk about the areas that they, they miss and penalties come in. So tax planning is actually you need to exercise to undertake to minimize the tax liability. Minimize the tax liability, you use all the available uh, income tax incentives, income tax deductions, income tax rebates. So you plan according to that and you do your plan. For tax management, is you manage your taxes. Manage your taxes, it means that means you need to manage your collection of tax from your customers. You need to manage your tax payment, must be on timely basis. You need to manage your accounting, your books and records, your furnishing of your tax returns. So all these are part of the management of the tax. These two always must come hand in hand. It's like uh, when you want to do your tax planning, you must manage your documentation. Like for example, companies will uh, will claim a lot of deductions, but they don't manage their documents well. They lose the documents. When IRB come and do for their audit, they will look for these source documents. So that's where the tax management and tax planning hand in hand to ensure we are efficient. So which means that sometimes you see that they, they claim an amount, they didn't have that sufficient documentation. So when IRB comes, then they'll get the penalty, right? Yes, and uh, nowadays IRB, I think we all aware uh, they have the KPI has increased and they are going around and sending audit letters to all a lot of SME companies requesting for documents. Some are basic general ledger which the SME cannot provide accurately, which differs with the final return that submitted. So that's where the management is very important. Mm, understand. Okay. So how SMEs can have better tax planning in 2021 before they close their books? And also, could you just share like a few tax saving tips? Okay. So mostly, majority of the companies, I think in Malaysia, your financial year end is December. So December 2020, you have many with June financial year end or March. So those December 2020, they'll be closing the books now. These are mainly for SME. Listed companies, they would have closed the books and would have done the audit. So SME companies, before now you close the books, you have to ensure you use the maxim, maximize all the, what have been given in the budget last year. There's some of the things in the budget, 2020, that, uh, 2020 budget, you, leave, you have renovation due to Panjana COVID incentive. The government gave some uh, incentive. You can claim for renovation up to 300,000. Previously, you can't claim this. So. Uh, companies, you must ensure you have the documents before you record in your books. There are also, under the budget, additional incentives for specified industries that I are for uh, uh, healthcare facilities. So you have all these type of incentives. You need to look into these incentives and claim accordingly. Right? When you claim accordingly, this is so, documentation must be there. You cannot claim without justifying the documents. Uh, incentive also, government has given incentive for people to rehire pensioners, right? So you rehire, you got double tax deductions. So if you are hired pensioners and now you must prove, you must follow the criteria given for the rehiring of pensioners or Walga Amas. Like one of the example, I think uh, Walga Amas, it must be a third party. You cannot hire your own brother or your own sister. So this, this is the planning, you must, you must put it into that. That, that that of planning inside there. Mm. And then other planning into the tax will come. <clears throat> you, we all know that this COVID last year, a lot of companies' sales have been affected. Uh, your sales have been affected. There could be uh, a lot of revenue. A lot of companies, SME, maybe the revenue have been there. You have generated your revenue, but your collection is not there. 
So you must review your debtors. Look into your debtors, your customer, which customers have paid you, which customers have not paid you. Because uh, no point you have a, a 10 million revenue, but you have not collected. And if you have not collected, according to the tax law, you still have to pay your income tax. Mm. So this is a very crucial uh, planning for SME. You look into your debtors, those that you cannot collect, negotiate with your debtors, maybe you need to send legal letters, letter of demand. Then in that sense, you can do some provision for doubtful debt, which is allowed by the inland revenue. Or there could be some of the customers you uh, they, they in dispute. So maybe you have to issue a credit note to, to reduce the sales. Uh, to look, look at the books before you actually close. Companies with uh, inventories, <clears throat> you may have a lot of inventories, especially in COVID, you can't sell these inventories. So why do you still keep it in your books? So you need to identify these specific inventories and again do your provision for your obsolete stocks. This was, this, this, these two planning will actually help a lot of the uh, taxes that you're going to pay. You need, you need to plan your taxes. The other, other areas of the tax planning is um, look <coughs> what type of expenses that you have incurred. I think the last year the equipment for COVID is allowed for deduction. So all these expenses are allowable. Entertainment expenses is generally not allowable in full. So you don't simply go and claim or your legal fee, you could have incurred legal fee. Legal fee, if not for your trade, you can't claim as well. And I would advise uh, taxpayers of this SME to look into this type of claims and go in detail and get your accountant or your tax agent to go into it and analyze before you close your books. Okay. I guess maybe we can go deeper. Like For example, like let's say the debtors, right? You mentioned that, let's say if, if someone is doing sales of 10 million, but they can only collect, say, 1 million, and then they say that they want to provide for doubtful debts of uh, 5 million. So does it mean that the 5 million, if they provide the doubtful debts, it will increase their expenses, which means that the taxes that they pay will be lesser? Yes. A provision for doubtful debts, the tax rule is it must be a specific provision. Maybe it must be specific customer, the amount is specific, and we must have a legal letter at least a letter of demand, reminder letters to the customer. So it's better to do that legal letter rather than you pay your taxes on that 5 million. Assuming mm. it's 20%, you, you pay 1 million of taxes, but mm. you can't collect. Second option, if the legal letter, if your customers, you can go talk, customers may not agree. So you do a credit note, you give a discount if you have to, rather than paying for the taxes. Uh, the important mm. thing, IRB regulation is you must have an action. What action have you taken to recover the debt? I see. So by doing this, at least they can save some of their money since the debt, they can't even collect anyway, right? Yes. We, so we know many industries, they have this, not cash industries, a lot of debts are accumulated because we, over the years under IW, we have various clients who are going through these issues. Mm. They say last year, uh, they did these sales, but they couldn't collect. Then what? why do you want to recognize the sales? I think a lot of companies uh, into, went into the glove industry. They tried to do trading into glove, but then they couldn't collect the money. They delivered the goods. So legal action has to come in. Otherwise, your profit is recognized as your income and you have to pay tax for it. Okay, understand. So that is for debtors. But what about inventories? How do they prove that? Because like debtors, maybe they can prove by sending letters to the debtors. But for inventories, how do they prove that they, they can uh, provide for it? Inventories, I would say, they could be like uh, inventories that are not sellable or obsolete inventories. So they need to take pictures. They need to do reports. If the inventories are significant, they need to do uh, director's resolution. So all the directors collectively agree that all these incentive inventories cannot be sold at all. Some industry, you will have inventory which is completely obsolete. It's stale. Your shelf life is maybe up to November last year. So up to November, you couldn't sell, right? We, we actually have a client who is doing a, a bubble tea business. So the, before the COVID, they, import, they, they imported a lot of inventories from Taiwan. So most of these are expired around May, July or August. 
So they say they, they lose millions in that. So that's why we say you need to get all the record, put all the report, you write off the inventory. When the IRB comes in, they have to look. It goes to an extent of taking picture of the inventories. The shelf life is expired. You can't do anything. Mm. So what about like shopping malls? Like they are selling, you know, like bags or t-shirts. So can they write off those inventories? Uh, if those are obsolete, then it's allowed to write off. If it's not obsolete, it's not. Now you, they must do maybe now if you do a, a cheap sale, a sales for that, at least, at least they reduce the losses. Mm. Mm. So you mentioned that not all entertainment can be claimed by SMEs, right? So what, what sort of entertainment can they claim? Like for example, <laughs> generally uh, entertainment God. is for your staff. Entertainment is fully allowed. If you entertain your staff, uh, you can, mm. staff entertainment, maybe we'll call it a staff refreshment. Uh, the other part of entertainment, if your customer, you entertain your customer directly, you must identify this is your existing customer. So when the claims come in, you entertain the customer 1,000, it might be written who the customer, the name, existing, potential customer is not allowed. So most of the time, all this potential or non-existing, we claim 50%. But how do they pro- prove it though? Because let's say if you go f- to eat and then the bill is like uh, 200 or 500 ringgit, so how do you identify whether it's potential or existing yes. customer? <laughs> so, even revenue normally when they comes and check, they will check one year later or two years later. So, your plan comes earlier. So, if you have uh, dinner, 300, 400, sometimes uh, you have staff, you need to prove you have, uh, you cannot be not having staff. You have, let's say, 10 staff. So, you can actually put all this as an ent- uh, entertainment refreshment with your staff, put your name. Mm-hmm. So, it is accepted as 100% claimable. Sometimes some people, they put uh, direct uh, staff expenses, but the company don't have staff. Mm, yeah. so it must okay. be justifiable to make it entertainment allowable. Uh, just now you mentioned that uh, during COVID, there is new incentive that, that businesses can claim, right? But because there's many different industries, right? some industry can claim this, some industry can claim that. So where can people find out on the full list of the new tax incentive? Yes. Actually, currently, I think the, the Inland Revenue website is quite updated on all the incentives available. You are true. A lot, a lot of these incentives generally for the bigger giant companies. Uh, for the smaller SME, what I see the incentive is mainly buying the, the equipment, uh, the equipment glove you can claim. And then hiring, uh, I said, the old elderly citizen, the renovation incentive, you renovate your place, you, uh, you can claim up to 300000 Tax the tax rebate. The other incentive I see are healthcare companies, uh, IR4, these are more, more high-end companies. It doesn't, doesn't fall into most of SME in the country. Uh, it doesn't fall the layman, the supermarket, the mini market. So, but all is actually available in the IRB website. Let's move on to tax penalties. So, what are common tax penalties that you see in SMEs and also how can companies avoid them? <clears throat> Generally, uh, now, like we say, uh, the inland revenue is very, very strict. They're going around even picking up for 10 cents differences on certain area to give the penalty. So, very, very basic common mistakes the SME do are uh, the, the staff, one of it is the staff salary, right? Your staff salary, those are taxable. You need to deduct the income tax correctly. It's called PCB, monthly tax deduction, and pay to the government correctly. So many companies, uh, maybe your salary, let's say, is 5,000. You may tell the company, hey, I don't want to deduct the tax. So the company just let go. When come with the audit, the inland revenue can penalize between 200 to 2,000 per month of the non-compliance. So we have companies who have uh, SME, uh, 10,000 is very big, 20,000 penalties. Is the law strictly say, so Benjamin, your tax deduction should be 500, 200 a month. The company did 150. Under deduct by 50, penalty can be 1,000 per month. Uh, so it's very common. This is a staff deduction. They are, they are enforcing this. So uh, also on the staff the staff matters also, any staff who resign, any staff who join the company, any staff who leave the country, the company must inform in learn revenue. There are specific forms for that. 
So 2021, they're going to be very hard on companies. There also penalties will be very high just for not informing that Benjamin resigned the company. Uh, so this is, you have to keep, your HR department have to keep these records. This is under staff. Then at the end of the year, your financial year is December, end of December, every company need to submit the Borang E. Borang E is a summary of the, all the staff salary. This also comes under income tax. tax. They need to plan and submit this to the inland revenue. Without that, there will be penalty as well. Even your company got no operation during the year, you have to submit. Many, many SME fail to submit. They say, no, we don't have staff. You don't have staff, you still have to submit on the borrowing E. That's on the companies, companies is like the form is form C for Sundan Berhad. For, for Sundan Berhad also, <coughs> a lot of companies, when they do the tax computation, all the attachments, tax computation, we submit online. You don't need to submit any supporting document. But now Inland Revenue is doing their desk audit. They are asking, writing letters to the clients and say, please supply me this supporting document. Like earlier I was saying, a lot of them, they must make sure it's there. All the Helayang Kerja, Lamperan. That means, uh, for example, maybe your company, you have you given commission of uh, 200,000. You put in the books 200,000, you paid. So you need to have commission. The rule is you need to have the IC number, the name of the person and all. So when the Indian Revenue come and ask you, you need to have all that. Otherwise, they will not allow these expenses. That comes under <coughs> company company form. So come back to, if you have a lot of com commissions that you are paying to third parties, you need to give uh, CP58, issue CP58 to the third party who receive commission. Because a lot of people plan taxes by sometimes creating commission, right? Inland Revenue is aware of that. So they are very strict on that. You may have legal fee. Make sure the legal fee is purely for the business. Another new thing starting in 2021, transfer pricing documentation. Uh, transfer pricing, uh, to talk about transfer pricing, it can be a huge, huge topic. But uh, in, in, a, in a just transfer pricing, let's see, transaction between related party. Generally, uh, SME will think they are not involved in transfer pricing because it's involved from multinational companies. Our mm -hmm. uh, revenue above 50 million, revenue above 100 million. But no, inland revenue also look at SME companies whereby they may have transaction with the brother, the sister, right? It's all supposed to be arm's length transaction. Uh, St. Jan Berhad may have a property you rent out to the uh, related party to your brother, 1,000 per month. But market is 5,000. So when they come and audit, they say, this is not arm's length transaction. So this is where you need to have your transfer pricing documentation. In the form, it's required. So now when 2021, when Inland Revenue requests for the transfer pricing documentation, you cannot provide within 14 days, the penalty can go up to 100,000 or six months jail. So this is in 2021, they have revamped all this. The requirement is have increased. Many SME are not aware of this until today. Uh, those, so to avoid all this, our, our uh, advice to SME directors and all, firstly, directors need to be aware. A uh, lot of directors uh, have advice, you can be penny-wise, how foolish. You think uh, it's nothing to do with me. My tax agent will take care, my auditor will take care. But you need to be aware of this. And then if you have your in-house accountant, get your in-house accountant to go out for training, a lot of training outside there to be aware of this tax requirement. Finally, it comes to tax agents like us, like tax consultants. That is, I'm sure, SME need to have the cash flow to hire us to manage all this. So these are the three ways that you really need to take into account. You cannot be saying at the end of the day, I'm not aware of that. Mm. Right. IRB does not allow you to claim ignorance. Mm. The law yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that transfer pricing is something that is very new. So how do SMEs have those documentation? Like let's say if they pay, like for example, like salary, if they pay to their brother um, 3000 but the market is like, I don't know, fresh grad say 3005 how do they sort of document this? 
Transfer pricing actually has been there quite some time, but now they're enforcing on SME. So it's generally on transaction. Salary, they don't look at salary. They look at services. Uh, so the brother may come in as a service, consultancy, mm-hmm. service provider, or goods. Uh, so it's how do we cons- uh, look at it? It must compare with arm's length. If my brother gives service, I pay him uh, 50000 But actually the service outside is only 10000 so the documentation, there are service agreement. We call it service agreement. So we should have a service agreement to state the key point is, among others, is the relationship. What is the relationship? What is the transaction? But the key point to be stated inside the transfer pricing document is, what is the basis of the charge? Uh, what is the basis? Why you give him 50000 but outsider you will give only 10000 or the other way, when you sell goods, SME sell goods to the related party. I sell to my related party 30 cents, but outside there, I sell 90 cents. Why is cheaper? So IAB can disregard that and follow the market value and charge you. So document, you need to document. Sometimes it's reasonable, right? I can sell to my related party cheap because he pays me well. He buys in bulk. Ah, so if you have a valid reason and IRB come and check, they, they won't. It's, it doesn't mean that you cannot do business with a related party. You mm. can, but you must justify the pricing in the documentation. It's called transfer pricing documentation. Can, for SME, can be as simple as uh, five or six pages. MNC, which we have done, it can be 100 or 200 pages. But we, today we are focusing more on SME. So for the tax documentation, uh, how long do, do SMEs have to keep the documentation? All the documentation from the time of the transaction generally is seven years. But IRB can go unlimited if there's proven of fraud element. I think lately or so, a couple of years, IRB a day and the Bank Negara, it's all, come, it's all under the umbrella of AMLA, Anti-Money Laundering Act. Uh, so if IRB has sufficient, uh, suspicious that you are doing money laundering, the time is unlimited. Generally, mm-hmm. seven years. So that means fraud, money laundering, criminal activities. Okay. Is so un- unlimited. does it mean that after seven years we can, because the doc- documents will get more and more as as the business grow. So does it mean that after seven years the previous ones can be? Uh, dispose different place yeah dispose yes what, what we advise is to keep all your documents in boxes by year so once the seven year is over you just can get rid of all the boxes of course your confidential thing you have to have the normal invoices documents you can shred it and send to the experts to shred it and dispose you don't have to keep can they store it in the cloud because like sometimes the document, the wordings, the print will be not clear already. So can mm. they like take a picture and then store it in cloud as a documentation? Yeah, now moving into technology, Inland Revenue Board also has accepted to save in cloud, to scan and save. So uh, I think like currently, so when they audit, they request, they write to us, they will ask us just to email them, email them this document. that document. So they have accepted. I think they also have technology to check to detect whether the documents are fraudulent or not. So they have, they have accepted cloud documents. All right. Okay, Richard, yeah. so this has been very good and thanks for providing all the tax management and so tax planning tips. you have any other things that you want to share with the audience? So far now, we're finally there to take my, my last words to all SME out there is, I mean, we know that times are bad, so making money is difficult, but taxes will never end. Huh? The, the, the Inland Revenue will go all out for taxes. So we need to look out so that we don't be caught in between. When we're caught in between, we cannot give excuse of COVID. Right? <laughs> now there's investigation that I say AMLA. AMLA is very strong. So Inland Revenue also are working with AMLA. They go around. They can stop every of your activity within hours. That means they can stop your banking activity, your family banking activity, your husband, wife, everything they can stop if they suspect is money laundering. So this is very important. We will advise everybody, all SME, that to take a full, full heat of the advisors.
Thanks, Richard, for coming on to the show. Check out their website, RW William, which I'll put in the description. And I'll see you in the next episode. Okay, thanks a lot.